can you just start out telling us what happened to you uh, and your offices? On July 29th, uh, at five o'clock in the morning uh, here uh, Central Time, I'm in St. Louis right now, um, uh, a loud racket out in front of my house uh, that uh, included uh, this voice on, on a loudspeaker uh, commanding uh, me uh, and everybody who was in the house to come out uh, with our hands raised and empty. And, uh, and then flashbang grenades began to explode all around the house. And I was to learn later that it actually uh, penetrated the, the rear stairwell of the house and had, had, uh, had thrown uh, flashbang grenades there as well. And uh, so uh, I asked, asked my wife to, uh, to let me go out first and that she should try and, and call and let people know that we were being raided by the FBI. And so uh, I went downstairs first. I, I was to learn later that our phones were jammed, had been jammed and we couldn't get anybody on the phone. So I went downstairs first and when I opened the door, I was greeted uh, by these targeting darts, darts that were attached to automatic weapons in my chest. And uh, there were several of them and there was, uh, uh, an armored vehicle in front of the in front of my house, and uh, this boss was uh, saying, "Come out, come out, uh, move forward toward me, with your hands held high." And so I followed the command, and my wife, on her way out, following me, coming down the stairwell, uh, she was greeted uh, by a drone that almost hit her in the face, uh, going up the stairs uh, to and to our home. And so when I got out, the uh, I was zip tied, immediately I was zip tied. My wife was handcuffed uh, behind her back and, uh, and uh, I'm inquiring what is going on, why is this happening? And I'm told they have a search warrant uh, that I never did see uh, until, uh, and I asked to see it and they uh, rather conveniently or not, didn't have it in their immediate possession. So I didn't see the search warrant until hours later. Uh, when I was able to come back into my home and find uh, the search warrant on the table there. In the meantime, uh, in the uh, South St. Louis, which is predominantly white area of the city, uh, that where we've established offices uh, filled with the uh, uh, African People Solidarity Committee, which is an organization of white people who do mostly reparations work, but also basic solidarity work with the struggle for African liberation. Uh, their office uh, was being raided and uh, battering rams were used, the same kind of command about come out, that this is the FBI. They used uh, flashbang grenades uh, in the place. They stuck uh, tape uh, on the video camera, so uh, in an attempt to uh, uh, mask their activities, even though we were able to get some of that. Um, and they went uh, to the department of, apartment upstairs. They held uh, two, a young couple at gunpoint. Uh, these are two of the leaders in the solidarity movement at gunpoint. At the same time, uh, they had gone to the home of uh, two of the solidarity leaders, uh, and they had uh, banged, knocked their doors in uh, and held them also uh, uh, at gunpoint, detained them at gunpoint. At the same time, in, in St. Petersburg, Florida, where it was 6 o'clock Eastern time, they uh, used battering rams, knocked the doors in at our Uhura House, our office there, uh, and uh, they took our radio station briefly off the air. Uh, they raided our archives and took some of the materials from there, uh, and uh, they went to the residence of uh, another person who uh, has been uh, characterized as an unindicted co-conspirator. Young woman, they went to her house, uh, her resident, and they uh, uh, they used the St. Petersburg police to tell her, knock on the door, tell her that a car was being broken into and that uh, she should come out and look at it. And when she went outside, the FBI came from around this van and what have you. Uh, and they used that as an excuse to get into her vehicle to take, take her cell phone, they, they took my cell phone, they took the phone from my wife, they took, uh, uh, they stole um, uh, computers, they stole iPads, uh, and they did a similar thing to uh, the our office in St. Petersburg, Florida. They stole financial rep rep records uh, for the various uh, 
of, of community uh, development programs that we are responsible for in in uh, in, in St. Louis and, and St. Petersburg and Philadelphia and Oakland, California, et cetera. They took all of that stuff. And uh, so uh, that was what happened on that day. I, I, I continued to ask them why, why this was happening. And they said that, uh, I said, well, if you have a warrant, why am I handcuffed? And they said, it's for, for your protection and ours. And uh, they invited me, gave me the right to sit on the curb. Uh, and then uh, when I refused to do that, they told me I can sit in the back of their car. And I wasn't interested in doing that either. Uh, they told me that I should, uh, uh, if I wanted to get my phones back quickly, I should take the, I should open the phone so they could access it. Uh, they said the same thing uh, to my wife. We refused to open the phones uh, and continued to say, uh, we don't want to be here. Can I leave? Can I leave? And so finally, uh, uh, they said, you can leave. Uh, so I started to walk away and uh, either... One of us, me and my wife, uh, said, well, what about our cars? We can take the car. So they were really nice <laughs> in the sense that they said, well, where are your car keys? And they went upstairs to find the car keys where they were located, brought the car keys down. And uh, so we were able to leave. But uh, we had been unable to contact anybody, like I said, because our phones had been jammed. And so uh, we were isolated like that. Before we left, they, they said that uh, they, they, they had the search warrant because uh, an indictment was going to be dropped later uh, that morning uh, of a Russian, Russian national. And that uh, my name uh, was in that indictment. And so uh, that was what it was about. I was, I was to learn uh, that uh, there was some allegation that um, that uh, that I was on the payroll of Russia, that the work that I've been doing now for 60 years or so and 50 years with the African People's Socialist Party, uh, um, or if not that duration of it recently, uh, you know, uh, been paid by the Russians to do that. And that, uh, and it had to do uh, with, uh, with the uh, elections uh, that we had run two uh, campaigns, uh, uh, well, actually, about uh, about four, uh, a total of four campaigns, one in uh, two in 2017, two in 2019 in St. Petersburg, Florida. And they wanted to say that uh, we were doing this at the behest of the Russians and, and possibly that we were paid by the Russians to do this, you know, et cetera. And uh, that the Russians had paid us, uh, I think, an allegation to do some other just ridiculous uh, kind of thing. And it's, it's absolutely and totally nonsensical.